The Imperial Japanese Army IJA, Da Ri Ben Di Guo Lu Jun Dai Nippon Taikoku Raikugan, Army of the Greater Japanese Empire, was the official ground-based armed force of the Empire of Japan from 1868 to 1945. It was controlled by the Imperial Japanese Army General Staff Office and the Ministry of the Army, both of which were nominally subordinate to the Emperor of Japan as Supreme Commander of the Army and the Navy. Later an Inspectorate General of Aviation became the third agency with oversight of the Army. During wartime or national emergencies, the nominal command functions of the Emperor would be centralized in an Imperial General Headquarters IGHQ, an ad hoc body consisting of the Chief and Vice Chief of the Army General Staff, the Minister of the Army, the Chief and Vice Chief of the Naval General Staff, the Inspector General of Aviation, and the Inspector General of Military Training. Origins, 1868–1871 In the mid-19th century, Japan had no unified national army and the country was made up of feudal domains Han, with the Tokugawa shogunate Bakufu, in overall control, which had ruled Japan since 1603. The Bakufu army, although large force, was only one among others, and Bakufu efforts to control the nation depended upon the cooperation of its vassals' armies. The opening of the country after two centuries of seclusion subsequently led to the Meiji Restoration and the Boshin War in 1868. The domains of Satsuma and Choshu came to dominate the coalition against the Sogonate. Boshin War on 27 January 1868, tensions between the Sogonate and Imperial sides came to a head when Tokugawa Yoshinobu marched on Kyoto, accompanied by a 15,000-strong force consisting of troops that had been trained by French military advisors. They were opposed by 5,000 troops from the Satsuma, Choshu, and Tosa domains. At the two road junctions of Toba and Fushimi just south of Kyoto, the two forces clashed. On the second day, an imperial banner was given to the defending troops and a relative of the emperor, Ninijinomiya Yoshiaki, was named nominal commander-in-chief, in effect making the pro-imperial forces officially an imperial army, Guanjun Kangan. The Bafuku forces eventually retreated to Osaka, with the remaining forces ordered to retreat to Edo. Yoshinobu and his closest advisors left for Edo by ship. The encounter at Toba Fushimi between the Imperial and Sogonate forces marked the beginning of the conflict. With the court in Kyoto firmly behind the Satsuma Choshu Tosa coalition, other domains that were sympathetic to the cause, such as Totora, Inaba, Aki, Hiroshima, and Heizen, Saga, emerged to take a more active role in military operations. Western domains that had either supported the Sogonate or remained neutral also quickly announced their support of the restoration movement. The nascent Meiji state required a new military command for its operations against the Sogonate. In 1868, the Imperial Army, being just a loose amalgam of domain armies, the government created four military divisions, the Takaido, Tosando, Sanindo, and Hokorikudo, each of which was named for a major highway. Overseeing these four armies was a new high command, the Eastern Expeditionary High Command Tosei Deso Tokufu, whose nominal head was Prince Arasugawa no Miya, with two court nobles as senior staff officers. This connected the loose assembly of domain forces with the imperial court, which was the only national institution in a still unformed nation-state. The army continually emphasized its link with the imperial court, firstly, to legitimize its cause, secondly, to brand enemies of the imperial government as enemies of the court and traitors, and, lastly, to gain popular support. To supply food, weapons, and other supplies for the campaign, the imperial government established logistical relay stations along three major highways. These small depots held stockpiled material supplied by local pro-government domains, or confiscated from the Bafuku and others opposing the imperial government. Local villagers were routinely impressed as porters to move and deliver supplies between the depots and frontline units. Struggles to form a centralized army Initially, the new army fought under makeshift arrangements, with unclear channels of command and control and no reliable recruiting base. Although fighting for the imperial cause, many of the units were loyal to their domains rather than the imperial court. 
In March 1869, the imperial government created various administrative offices, including a military branch, and in the following month organized an imperial bodyguard of 400 to 500, which consisted of Satsuma and Choshu troops strengthened by veterans of the encounter at Toba Fushimi, as well as yeoman and masterless samurai from various domains. The imperial court told the domains to restrict the size of their local armies and to contribute to funding a national officer's training school in Kyoto. However, within a few months the government disbanded both the military branch and the imperial bodyguard, the former was ineffective while the latter lacked modern weaponry and equipment. To replace them, two new organizations were created. One was the Military Affairs Directorate which was composed of two bureaus, one for the Army and one for the Navy. The Directorate drafted an army from troop contributions from each domain proportional to each domain's annual rice production Koku. This conscript army Chohaigun, integrated samurai and commoners from various domains into its ranks. As the war continued, the Military Affairs Directorate expected to raise troops from the wealthier domains and, in June, the organization of the army was fixed, where each domain was required to send 10 men for each 10,000 koku of rice produced. However, this policy put the imperial government in direct competition with the domains for military recruitment, which was not rectified until April 1868, when the government banned the domains from enlisting troops. Consequently, the quota system never fully worked as intended and was abolished the following year. The imperial forces encountered numerous difficulties during the war, especially during the campaign in eastern Japan. Headquarters in faraway Kyoto often proposed plans at odds with the local conditions, which led to tensions with officers in the field, who in many cases ignored centralized direction in favor of unilateral action. The army lacked a strong central staff that was capable of enforcing orders. Consequently, military units were at the mercy of individual commanders' leadership and direction. This was not helped by the absence of a unified tactical doctrine, which left units to fight according to the tactics favored by their respective commanders. There was increased resentment by many lower-ranked commanders as senior army positions were monopolized by the nobility together with samurai from Choshu and Satsuma. The use of commoners within the new army created resentment among the samurai class. Although the nascent Meiji government achieved military success, the war left a residue of disgruntled warriors and marginalized commoners, together with a torn social fabric. Foundation of a National Army, 1871–1873 After the defeat of the Tokugawa Shogunate and operations in northeastern Honshu and Hokkaido a true national army did not exist. Many in the Restoration Coalition had recognized the need for a strong centralized authority and although the imperial side was victorious, the early Meiji government was weak and the leaders had to maintain their standing with their domains whose military forces was essential for whatever the government needed to achieve. The leaders of the Restoration were divided over the future organization of the army. Omura Masujiro who had sought a strong central government at the expense of the domains advocated for the creation of a standing national army along European lines. Under the control of the government, the introduction of conscription for commoners and the abolition of the samurai class. Okubo Toshimichi preferred a small volunteer force consisting of former samurai. Omura's views for modernizing Japan. S. military led to his assassination in 1869 and his ideas were largely implemented after his death by Yamagata Aritomo. Yamagata had commanded mixed commoner samurai Choshu units during the Boshin War and was convinced of the merit of peasant soldiers. Although he himself was part of the samurai class, albeit of insignificant lower status, Yamagata distrusted the warrior class, several members of whom he regarded as clear dangers to the Meiji state. Establishment of the Imperial Guard and institutional reforms In March 1871, the War Ministry announced the creation of an Imperial Guard Goshenpei, of 6,000 men, consisting of nine infantry battalions, two artillery batteries and two cavalry squadrons. The Emperor donated 100,000 ryo to underwrite the new unit, which was subordinate to the court. It was composed of members of the Satsuma, Choshu and Tosa domains, who had led the restoration. 
Satsuma provided four battalions of infantry and four artillery batteries, Choshu provided three battalions of infantry, Tosa two battalions of infantry, two squadrons of cavalry, and two artillery batteries. For the first time, the Meiji government was able to organize a large body of soldiers under a consistent rank and pay scheme with uniforms, which were loyal to the government rather than the domains. The Imperial Guard S. Principal mission was to protect the throne by suppressing domestic samurai revolts, peasant uprisings and anti-government demonstrations. The possession of this military force was a factor in the government's abolition of the Han system. The military ministry Hayobusho, was reorganized in July 1871. On August 29, simultaneously with the decree abolishing the domains, the Dajokan ordered local daimyos to disband their private armies and turn their weapons over to the government. Although the government played on the foreign threat, especially Russia's southward expansion, to justify a national army, the immediately perceived danger was domestic insurrection. Consequently, on August 31, the country was divided into four military districts, each with its own chindai garrison, to deal with peasant uprisings or samurai insurrections. The Imperial Guard formed the Tokyo Garrison, whereas troops from the former domains filled the ranks of the Osaka, Kumamoto, and Sendai garrisons. The four garrisons had a total of about 8,000 troops, mostly infantry, but also a few hundred artillerymen and engineers. Smaller detachments of troops also guarded outposts at Kagoshima, Fushimi, Nagoya, Hiroshima, and elsewhere. By late December 1871, the army set modernization and coastal defense as priorities. Long-term plans were devised for an armed force to maintain internal security, defend strategic coastal areas, train and educate military and naval officers, and build arsenals and supply depots. Despite previous rhetoric about the foreign menace, little substantive planning was directed against Russia. In February 1872, the military ministry was abolished and separate army and navy ministries were established. Conscription The conscription ordinance enacted on January 10, 1873, made universal military service compulsory for all male subjects in the country. The law called for a total of seven years of military service, three years in the regular army, Jobigan, two years in the reserve, Dai Ichi Kobigan, and an additional two years in the second reserve, Dani Kobigan. All able-bodied males between the ages of 17 and 40 were considered members of the National Guard, Kokumingan, which would only see service in a severe national crisis, such as an attack or invasion of Japan. The conscription examination decided which group of recruits would enter the army, those who failed the exam were excused from all examinations except for the National Guard. Recruits who passed entered the draft lottery, where some were selected for active duty. A smaller group would be selected for replacement duty should anything happen to any of the active duty soldiers, the rest were dismissed. One of the primary differences between the samurai and the peasant class was the right to bear arms, this ancient privilege was suddenly extended to every male in the nation. There were several exemptions, including criminals, those who could show hardship, the physically unfit, heads of households or heirs, students, government bureaucrats, and teachers. A conscript could also purchase an exemption for 270 yen, which was an enormous sum for the time and which restricted this privilege to the wealthy. Under the new 1873 ordinance, the conscript army was composed mainly of second and third sons of impoverished farmers who manned the regional garrisons, while former samurai controlled the Imperial Guard and the Tokyo Garrison, initially, because of the army. S. Small size and numerous exemptions, relatively few young men were actually conscripted for a three-year term on active duty. In 1873, the army numbered approximately 17,900 from a population of 35 million at the time, it doubled to about 33,000 in 1875. The conscription program slowly built up the numbers. Public unrest began in 1874, reaching the apex in the Satsuma Rebellion of 1877, which used the slogans, Oppose conscription, Oppose elementary schools, and Fight Korea. 
It took a year for the new army to crush the uprising, but the victories proved critical in creating and stabilizing the imperial government and to realize sweeping social, economic and political reforms that enabled Japan to become a modern state that could stand comparison to France, Germany, and other European powers. Further development and modernization 1873 to 1894 Foreign assistance The early Imperial Japanese Army was developed with the assistance of advisors from France, through the Second French Military Mission to Japan 1872-80, and the Third French Military Mission to Japan 1884-89. However, after France's defeat in 1871 the Japanese government switched to the victorious Germans as a model. From 1886 to April 1890, it hired German military advisors Major Jakob Meckel, replaced in 1888 by von Wildenbruck and Captain von Blankenborg to assist in the training of the Japanese general staff. In 1878, the Imperial Japanese Army General Staff Office, based on the German General Staff, was established directly under the Emperor and was given broad powers for military planning and strategy. Other known foreign military consultants were Major Pompeo Grillo from the Kingdom of Italy, who worked at the Osaka foundry from 1884 to 1888, followed by Major Kuradizi from 1889 to 1890, and Captain Schirmbeck from the Netherlands, who worked on improving coastal defenses from 1883 to 1886. Japan did not use foreign military advisors between 1890 and 1918, until the French military mission to Japan, 1918-19, headed by Commandant Jacques-Paul Faure, was requested to assist in the development of the Japanese air services. Taiwan Expedition the Japanese invasion of Taiwan under Qing rule in 1874 was a punitive expedition by Japanese military forces in response to the Mudan incident of December 1871. The Paiwan people, who are indigenous peoples of Taiwan, murdered 54 crew members of a wrecked merchant vessel from the Ryukyu Kingdom on the southwestern tip of Taiwan. Twelve men were rescued by the local Chinese-speaking community and were transferred to Miyako-jima in the Ryukyu Islands. The Empire of Japan used this as an excuse to both assert sovereignty over the Ryukyu Kingdom, which was a tributary state of both Japan and Qing China at the time, and to attempt the same with Taiwan, a Qing territory. It marked the first overseas deployment of the Imperial Japanese Army and Navy, an imperial rescript to soldiers and sailors of 1882 called for unquestioning loyalty to the Emperor by the new armed forces and asserted that commands from superior officers were equivalent to commands from the Emperor himself. Thenceforth, the military existed in an intimate and privileged relationship with the imperial institution. Top-ranking military leaders were given direct access to the emperor and the authority to transmit his pronouncements directly to the troops. The sympathetic relationship between conscripts and officers, particularly junior officers who were drawn mostly from the peasantry, tended to draw the military closer to the people. In time, most people came to look more for guidance in national matters more to military than to political leaders. By the 1890s, the Imperial Japanese Army had grown to become the most modern army in Asia, well-trained, well-equipped, and with good morale. However, it was basically an infantry force deficient in cavalry and artillery when compared with its European contemporaries. Artillery pieces, which were purchased from America and a variety of European nations, presented two problems, they were scarce, and the relatively small number that were available were of several different calibers, causing problems with ammunition supply. First Sino-Japanese War in the early months of 1894, the Donghak Rebellion broke out in southern Korea and had soon spread throughout the rest of the country, threatening the Korea capital Seoul, itself. The Chinese, since the beginning of May had taken steps to prepare the mobilization of their forces in the provinces of Xili, Shandong and in Manchuria, as a result of the tense situation on the Korean peninsula. These actions were planned more as an armed demonstration intended to strengthen the Chinese position in Korea, rather than as a preparation for war with Japan. On June 3, the Chinese government accepted the requests from the Korean government to send troops to help quell the rebellion, additionally they also informed the Japanese of the action. 
It was decided to send 2,500 men to Asan, about 70 kilometers from the capital Seoul. The troops arrived in Asan on June 9 and were additionally reinforced by 400 more on June 25. A total of about 2,900 Chinese soldiers were at Asan. From the very outset, the developments in Korea had been carefully observed in Tokyo. Japanese government had soon become convinced that the Donghak Rebellion would lead to Chinese intervention in Korea. As a result, soon after learning word about the Korean government, S request for Chinese military help immediately ordered all warships in the vicinity to be sent to Pusan and Chimulpo. On June 9, a formation of 420 Rikasentai, selected from the crews of the Japanese warships, was immediately dispatched to Seoul, where they served temporarily as a counterbalance to the Chinese troops camped at Asan. Simultaneously, the Japanese decided to send a reinforced brigade of approximately 8,000 troops to Korea. The reinforced brigade, included auxiliary units, under the command of General Oshima Yoshimasa was fully transported to Korea by June 27. The Japanese stated to the Chinese that they were willing to withdraw the brigade under General Oshima if the Chinese left Asan prior. However, when on 16 July, 8,000 Chinese troops landed near the entrance of the Tadong River to reinforce Chinese troops garrisoned in Pyongyang, the Japanese delivered Li Hongzhang an ultimatum, threatening to take action if any further troops were sent to Korea. Consequently, General Oshima in Seoul and commanders of the Japanese warships in Korean waters received orders allowing them to initiate military operations in the event that any more Chinese troops were sent to Korea. Despite this ultimatum, Lee considered that Japanese were bluffing and were trying to probe the Chinese readiness to make concessions. He decided, therefore to reinforce Chinese forces in Asan with a further 2,500 troops, 1,300 of which arrived in Asan during the night of July 23–24. At the same time, in the early morning of July 23, the Japanese had taken control of the royal palace in Seoul and imprisoned the King Gojong, forcing him to renounce ties with China. During the almost two month interval prior to the declaration of war, the two service staffs developed a two stage operational plan against China. The Army's 5th Division would land at Chimulpo to prevent a Chinese advance in Korea while the Navy would engage the Baiyang fleet in a decisive battle in order to secure control of the seas. If the Navy defeated the Chinese fleet decisively and secured command of the seas, the larger part of the army would undertake immediate landings on the coast between Shanhaiguan and Tientsin, and advance to the Xili Plain in order to defeat the main Chinese forces and bring the war to a swift conclusion. If neither side gained control of the sea and supremacy, the army would concentrate on the occupation of Korea and exclude Chinese influence there. Lastly, if the Navy was defeated and consequently lost command of the sea, Japanese forces in Korea would be ordered to hang on and fight a rearguard action while the bulk of the army would remain in Japan in preparation to repel a Chinese invasion. This worst-case scenario also foresaw attempts to rescue the beleaguered 5th Division in Korea while simultaneously strengthening homeland defenses. The Army S contingency plans which were both offensive and defensive depended on the outcome of the naval operations. Clashes between Chinese and Japanese forces at Pungdo and Sungwon caused irreversible changes to Sino-Japanese relations and meant that a state of war now existed between the two countries. The two governments officially declared war on August 1. Initially, the general staff S objective was to secure the Korean Peninsula before the arrival of winter and then land forces near Shanhaiguan. However, as the Navy was unable to bring the Baiyang fleet into battle in mid-August, temporarily withdrew from the Yellow Sea to refit and replenish its ships. As a consequence, in late August the General Staff ordered an advance overland to the Xili Plain via Korea in order to the capture bases on the Laodong Peninsula to prevent Chinese forces from interfering with the drive on Beijing. The 1st Army with two divisions was activated on September 1. In mid-September 17, the Chinese forces defeated at Pyongyang and occupied the city, as the remaining Chinese troops treated northward. The Navy 
Japanese's stunning victory in the Yalu on September 17, was crucial to the Japanese as it allowed the Second Army with three divisions and one brigade to land unopposed on the Laodong Peninsula about 100 miles north of Port Arthur which controlled the entry to the Bohai Gulf, in mid-October. While, the First Army pursued the remaining Chinese forces from Korea across the Yalu River, Second Army occupied the city of Darren on November 8 and then seized the fortress and harbor at Port Arthur on November 25. Farther north, the First Army's offensive stalled and was beset by supply problems and winter weather. Boxer Rebellion in 1899–1900, Boxer attacks against foreigners in China intensified, resulting in the siege of the diplomatic legations in Beijing. An international force consisting of British, French, Russian, German, Italian, Austro-Hungarian, American, and Japanese troops was eventually assembled to relieve the legations. The Japanese provided the largest contingent of troops, 20,840, as well as 18 warships. A small, hastily assembled, vanguard force of about 2,000 troops, under the command of British Admiral Edward Seymour, departed by rail, from Tianjin, for the legations in early June. On June 12, mixed boxer and Chinese regular army forces halted the advance, some 30 miles from the capital. The road-bound and badly outnumbered allies withdrew to the vicinity of Tianjin, having suffered more than 300 casualties. The Army General Staff in Tokyo became aware of the worsening conditions in China and had drafted ambitious contingency plans, but the government, in light of the triple intervention refused to deploy large forces unless requested by the Western powers. However, three days later, the General Staff did dispatch a provisional force of 1,300 troops, commanded by Major General Fukushima Yasumasa, to northern China. Fukushima was chosen because his ability to speak fluent English which enabled him to communicate with the British commander. The force landed near Tianjin on July 5. On June 17, with tensions increasing, naval Rikusentai from Japanese ships had joined British, Russian, and German sailors to seize the Dagu forts near Tianjin. Four days later, the Qing court declared war on the foreign powers. The British, in light of the precarious situation, were compelled to ask Japan for additional reinforcements, as the Japanese had the only readily available forces in the region. Britain at the time was heavily engaged in the Boer War, and, consequently, a large part of the British Army was tied down in South Africa. Deploying large numbers of troops from British garrisons in India would take too much time and weaken internal security there. Overriding personal doubts, Foreign Minister Aoki Shuzo calculated that the advantages of participating in an allied coalition were too attractive to ignore. Prime Minister Yamagata likewise concurred, but others in the cabinet demanded that there be guarantees from the British in return for the risks and costs of a major deployment of Japanese troops. On July 6, the 5th Infantry Division was alerted for possible deployment to China, but without a timetable being set. Two days later, on July 8, with more ground troops urgently needed to lift the siege of the foreign legations at Peking, the British ambassador offered the Japanese government 1 million British pounds in exchange for Japanese participation. Shortly afterward, advance units of the 5th Division departed for China, bringing Japanese strength to 3,800 personnel, of the then minus 17,000 Allied force. The commander of the 5th Division, Lt. Gen. Yamaguchi Motumi, had taken operational control from Fukushima. A second, stronger Allied Expeditionary Army stormed Tianjin, on July 14, and occupied the city. The Allies then consolidated and awaited the remainder of the 5th Division and other coalition reinforcements. In early August, the expedition pushed towards the capital where on August 14, it lifted the Boxer Siege. By that time, the 13,000-strong Japanese force was the largest single contingent, making up about 40% of the approximately 33,000-strong Allied Expeditionary Force. Japanese troops involved in the fighting had acquitted themselves well, although a British military observer felt their aggressiveness, densely packed formations, and over-willingness to attack cost them excessive casualties. For example, during the Tianjin fighting, the Japanese, while comprising less than one quarter 3, of the total Allied force of 17,000, suffered more than half of the casualties, 400 out of 730. Similarly at Beijing, the Japanese, constituting slightly less than half of the assault force, accounted for almost two-thirds of the losses, 280 of 453. 
Russo-Japanese War The Russo-Japanese War was the result of tensions between Russia and Japan, grown largely out of rival imperialist ambitions toward Manchuria and Korea. The Japanese army inflicted severe losses against the Russians, however, they were not able to deal a decisive blow to the Russian armies. Over-reliance on infantry led to large casualties among Japanese forces, especially during the siege of Port Arthur. World War I The Empire of Japan entered the war on the Entente side. Although tentative plans were made to send an expeditionary force of between 100,000 and 500,000 men to France, ultimately the only action in which the Imperial Japanese Army was involved was the careful and well-executed attack on the German concession of Qingdao in 1914. Interwar years Siberian intervention during 1917–18, Japan continued to extend its influence and privileges in China via the Nishihara loans. During the Siberian intervention, following the collapse of the Russian Empire after the Bolshevik Revolution, the Imperial Japanese Army initially planned to send more than 70,000 troops to occupy Siberia as far west as Lake Baikal. The Army General Staff came to view the Tsarist collapse as an opportunity to free Japan from any future threat from Russia by detaching Siberia and forming an independent buffer state. The plan was scaled back considerably due to opposition from the United States. In July 1918, the U.S. President, Woodrow Wilson, asked the Japanese government to supply 7,000 troops as part of an international coalition of 24,000 troops to support the American Expeditionary Force Siberia. After a heated debate in the Diet, the government of Prime Minister Terauchi Masataki agreed to send 12,000 troops, but under the command of Japan, rather than as part of an international coalition. Japan and the United States sent forces to Siberia to bolster the armies of the white movement leader Admiral Alexander Kolchak against the Bolshevik Red Army. Once the political decision had been reached, the Imperial Japanese Army took over full control under Chief of Staff General Yui Mitsu, and by November 1918, more than 70,000 Japanese troops had occupied all ports and major towns in the Russian maritime provinces and eastern Siberia. In June 1920, the United States and its allied coalition partners withdrew from Vladivostok, after the capture and execution of the White Army leader, Admiral Kolchak, by the Red Army. However, the Japanese decided to stay, primarily due to fears of the spread of communism so close to Japan and Japanese-controlled Korea and Manchuria. The Japanese army provided military support to the Japanese-backed Provisional Priamori government, based in Vladivostok, against the Moscow-backed Far Eastern Republic. The continued Japanese presence concerned the United States, which suspected that Japan had territorial designs on Siberia and the Russian Far East. Subjected to intense diplomatic pressure by the United States and Great Britain, and facing increasing domestic opposition due to the economic and human cost, the administration of Prime Minister Kato Tomosaburo withdrew the Japanese forces in October 1922. Rise of militarism In the 1920s the Imperial Japanese Army expanded rapidly and by 1927 had a force of 300,000 men. Unlike Western countries, the army enjoyed a great deal of independence from government. Under the provisions of the Meiji Constitution, the war minister was held accountable only to the emperor, Hirohito, himself, and not to the elected civilian government. In fact, Japanese civilian administrations needed the support of the army in order to survive. The army controlled the appointment of the war minister, and in 1936 a law was passed that stipulated that only an active duty general or lieutenant general could hold the post. As a result, military spending as a proportion of the national budget rose disproportionately in the 1920s and 1930s, and various factions within the military exerted disproportionate influence on Japanese foreign policy. The Imperial Japanese Army was originally known simply as the Army Raikugan, but after 1928, as part of the Army's turn toward Romantic nationalism and also in the service of its political ambitions, it retitled itself the Imperial Army Kogun. Conflict with China 
In 1931, the Imperial Japanese Army had an overall strength of 198,880 officers and men, organized into 17 divisions. The Manchurian Incident, as it became known in Japan, was a pretended sabotage of a local Japanese-owned railway, an attack staged by Japan but blamed on Chinese dissidents. Action by the military, largely independent of the civilian leadership, led to the invasion of Manchuria in 1931 and, later, to the Second Sino-Japanese War, in 1937. As war approached, the Imperial Army's influence with the Emperor waned and the influence of the Imperial Japanese Navy increased. Nevertheless, by 1938 the army had been expanded to 34 divisions. Conflict with the Soviet Union From 1932 to 1945 the Empire of Japan and the Soviet Union had a series of conflicts. Japan had set its military sights on Soviet territory as a result of the Hokushin Ron Doctrine, and the Japanese establishment of a puppet state in Manchuria brought the two countries into conflict. The war lasted on and off with the last battles of the 1930s, the Battle of Lake Kasan and the Battles of Kalkin Gol, ending in a decisive victory for the Soviets. The conflict stopped with the signing of the Soviet-Japanese Neutrality Pact on April 13, 1941. However, later, at the Yalta Conference, Stalin agreed to declare war on Japan, and on August 5, 1945, the Soviet Union voided their neutrality agreement with Japan. World War II In 1941, the Imperial Japanese Army had 51 divisions and various special purpose artillery, cavalry, anti-aircraft, and armored units with a total of 1,700,000 men. At the beginning of the Second World War, most of the Japanese Army 27 divisions was stationed in China. A further 13 divisions defended the Mongolian border, due to concerns about a possible attack by the Soviet Union. From 1942, soldiers were sent to Hong Kong, 23rd Army, the Philippines, 14th Army, Thailand, 15th Army, Burma, 15th Army, Dutch East Indies, 16th Army, and Malaya, 25th Army. By 1945, there were 5.5 million men in the Imperial Japanese Army. From 1943, Japanese troops suffered from a shortage of supplies, especially food, medicine, munitions, and armaments, largely due to submarine interdiction of supplies, and losses to Japanese shipping, which was worsened by a long-standing rivalry with the Imperial Japanese Navy. The lack of supplies caused large numbers of fighter aircraft to become unserviceable for lack of spare parts, and as many as two-thirds of Japan's total military deaths to result from illness or starvation. War crimes Throughout the Second Sino-Japanese War and World War II, the Imperial Japanese Army had shown immense brutality and engaged in numerous atrocities against civilians, as well as prisoners of war, with the Nanking Massacre being the most well-known example. Such atrocities throughout the war caused many millions of deaths. Post-World War II Ground Self-Defense Force Article 9 of the Japanese Constitution renounced the right to use force as a means of resolving disputes. This was enacted by the Japanese in order to prevent militarism, which had led to conflict. However, in 1947 the Public Security Force was formed, later in 1954, in the early stages of the Cold War, the Public Security Force formed the basis of the newly created Ground Self-Defense Force. Although significantly smaller than the former Imperial Japanese Army and nominally for defensive purposes only, this force constitutes the modern Army of Japan. Continued resistance Separately, some soldiers of the Imperial Japanese Army continued to fight on isolated Pacific Islands until at least the 1970s, with the last known Japanese soldier surrendering in 1974. Intelligence officer Haruo Noter, who surrendered on Lubang Island in the Philippines in March 1974, and Teruo Nakamura, who surrendered on the Indonesian island of Morotai in December 1974, appear to have been the last holdouts. Growth and organization of the IJA 1870, consisted of 12,000 men. 
1873, seven divisions of c. 36,000 men, c. 46,250 including reserves, 1885, consisted of seven divisions including the Imperial Guard Division. In the early 1900s, the IJA consisted of 12 divisions, the Imperial Guard Division, and numerous other units. These contained the following 380,000 active duty and first reserve personnel, former Class A and B, 1 conscripts after two-year active tour with 17 and one-half year commitment, 50,000 second line reserve, same as above but former class B, 2, conscripts. 220,000 National Army First National Army, 37 to 40 year old men from end of first reserve to 40 years old. Second National Army, untrained 20 year olds and over 40 year old trained reserves. 4,250,000 men available for service and mobilization. 1,922 to 21 divisions and 308,000 men. 1924, post-World War I reductions to 16 divisions and 250,800 men. 1925, reduction to 12 divisions. 1934, Army increased to 17 divisions, 1,936 to 250,000 active, 1,940 to 376,000 active with 2 million reserves in 31 divisions, 2 divisions in Japan, Imperial Guard plus one other, 2 divisions in Korea, 27 divisions in China and Manchuria. In late 1941 to 460,000 active in 41 divisions. Two divisions in Japan and Korea. 12 divisions in Manchuria. 27 divisions in China. Plus 59 brigade equivalents. Independent brigades, independent mixed brigades, cavalry brigades, amphibious brigades, independent mixed regiments, independent regiments 1,945 to 5 million active in 145 divisions includes three Imperial Guard, plus numerous individual units, with a large volunteer fighting corps includes 650,000 Imperial Japanese Army Air Service. Japan Defense Army in 1945 had 55 divisions, 53 infantry and 2 armor, and 32 brigades, 25 infantry and 7 armor, with 2.35 million men. 2, 25 million Army labor troops, 1.3 million Navy labor troops, 250,000 Special Garrison Force. 20,000 Kempetai total military in August 1945 was 6,095,000 including 676,863 Army Air Service. Casualties Over the course of the Imperial Japanese Army's existence, millions of its soldiers were either killed, wounded or listed as missing in action. Taiwan Expedition of 1,874 to 543, 12 killed in battle and 531 by disease. First Sino-Japanese War, the IJA suffered 1,132 dead and 3,758 wounded. Russo-Japanese War, the number of total Japanese dead in combat is put at around 47,000, with around 80,000 if disease is included. World War I, 1,455 Japanese were killed, mostly at the Battle of Tsingtao. World War II Deaths Between 2,120,000 and 2,190,000 Imperial Armed Forces dead including non-combat deaths includes 1,760,955 killed in action. Kia breakdown by theater. 
Army 1931-1945, China, 435,600 Kia, against U.S. forces, 659,650 Kia, Burma Campaign, 163,000 Kia, Australian Combat Zone, 199,511 Kia, French Indochina, 7,900 Kia, USSR, Manchuria, 45,900 Kia, others, Japan, 58,100 Kia, Navy, 473,800 Kia All Theaters, 672,000 known civilian dead, 810,000 missing in action and presumed dead. 7,500 prisoners of war see also Artillery of Japan Double Leaf Society Ethnic Taiwanese Imperial Japan Serviceman Uniforms of the Imperial Japanese Army Imperial Japanese Rations Imperial Wave Faction or Kodoha Japanese Army and Diplomatic Codes Japanese Army and Navy Strategies for South Seas Areas 1942, Japanese Army Railways and Shipping Section Japanese Holdouts Stragglers who surrendered after 1945 ranks of the Imperial Japanese Army Japanese War Crimes Kokoryu Kite The Black Dragon Society List of Bombs in Use by Imperial Japanese Army List of Japanese Army Military Engineer Vehicles of World War II List of Japanese Government and Military Commanders of World War II List of Japanese Military Equipment of World War II List of Radars in Use by Imperial Japanese Army List of Japanese Infantry Divisions Military Medals of Honor Japan Raikugan Shikin Gakko Strike North Group Strike South Group Tosei Ha Mudan Incident of 18 1971 References Bibliography Drea, Edward J. 2009. Japan's Imperial Army, Its Rise and Fall, 1853-1945. Lawrence, Kansas, University Press of Kansas. ISBN 0-8032-1708-0. Drea, Edward J. 2003. The Imperial Japanese Army, 1868-1945, Origins, Evolution, Legacy. War in the Modern World Since 1815. Routledge. ISBN 0-41525-140-0. Gilmore, Allison B. 1998. You Can't Fight Tanks with Bayonets, Psychological Warfare Against the Japanese Army in the Southwest Pacific. Lincoln, Nebraska, University of Nebraska Press. ISBN 0-803-22167-3. Harry's, Marion. Harry's, Susie. Soldiers of the Sun, The Rise and Fall of the Imperial Japanese Army. New York, Random House. ISBN 0-679-75303-6. Humphreys, Leonard A. 1996. The Way of the Heavenly Sword, The Japanese Army in the 1920s. Stanford University Press. ISBN 0-8047-2375-3. Jansen, Marius B. 2002. The Making of Modern Japan. Harvard University Press. ISBN 0-6740-0334-9. Jondrell, Colin D. 2016. Benjamin A. Haynes, ed. Samurai to Soldier, Remaking Military Service in Nineteenth-Century Japan. Melissa Haynes. Cornell University Press. ISBN 1-50170-664-0. Jowett, Philip. 2002. The Japanese Army 1931-45-1. Botley, Oxford, Osprey Publishing. ISBN 1-84176-353-5. Allender, Peter, 2014. Sino-Japanese Naval War 1894-1895. MMP Books. ISBN 8-36367-830-9. Ravina, Mark, 2004. The Last Samurai, The Life and Battles of Saigo Takamori. John Wiley and Sons. ISBN 0-471-08970-2. Further reading Barker, A.J. Japanese Army Handbook, 1939-1945, London, Ian Allen, 1979, Best, Antony, 2002, British Intelligence and the Japanese Challenge in Asia, 1914-1941, Palgrave Macmillan, 2002. Chen, Peter. Hori, Tomataro. World War II Database. Bix, Herbert, 2000. Hirohito and the Making of Modern Japan. New York, HarperCollins Publishers. Denfold, D. Colt. 1997, Hold the Marianas, The Japanese Defense of the Mariana Islands, White Main Publishing Company, 1997. 
Cooks, A. D. 1985, Nomonhan, Japan Against Russia, 1939, Stanford Up, 1985, Cooks, A. D. 1988, The Effectiveness of the Japanese Military Establishment in the Second World War, in A.R. Millet and W. Murray, eds. Military Effectiveness, Vol. 3, The Second World War, Allen and Onwin, 1988, pp. 1 44. Drea, Edward J., 1998. In the Service of the Emperor Essays on the Imperial Japanese Army. University of Nebraska Press. ISBN 0 8032 1708 0. Ford, Douglas, 2008. The Best Equipped Army in Asia U.S. Military Intelligence and the Imperial Japanese Army Before the Pacific War, 1919 1941. International Journal of Intelligence and Counterintelligence 21.1, 2008, 86 121. Ford, Douglas, 2009, Dismantling the Lesser Men and Supermen Myths, U.S. Intelligence on the Imperial Japanese Army After the Fall of the Philippines, Winter 1942 to Spring 1943, Intelligence and National Security 24.4, 2009, 542 to 573, Online Frustuck, Sabine, 2007, Uneasy Warriors, Gender, Memory, and Popular Culture in the Japanese Army, Univ of California Press, 2007. Gruel, Werner, 2010, Imperial Japan's World War II, 1931-1945, Transaction Publishers. Hayashi, Saburo, Alvin D. Cooks, 1959. Kogun, The Japanese Army in the Pacific War. Quantico, B.A., The Marine Corps Association. Hellman, Richard, Leo J. Daugherty, 2002. Fighting Techniques of a Japanese Infantryman in World War II, Training, Techniques and Weapons, Zenith Imprint. ISBN 0-7603-1145-5. Kublin, Hyman. The Modern Army of Early Meiji Japan. The Far Eastern Quarterly, 9 No. 1, 1949, pp. 20-41. Keen, John T. 2014, a Military History of Japan, From the Age of the Samurai to the 21st Century, ABC Clio, 2014. Norman, E. Herbert, Soldier and Peasant in Japan, The Origins of Conscription, Pacific Affairs 16 No. 1, 1943, pp. 47-64. Rotman, Gordon L., 2013, Japanese Army in World War II, Conquest of the Pacific 1941-42, Bloomsbury Publishing, 2013. Rotman, Gordon L. 2012, Japanese Infantryman 1937-45, Sword of the Empire, Bloomsbury Publishing, 2012. Sizemore, Major James D. 2015, The Russo-Japanese War, Lessons Not Learned, Pickle Partners Publishing, 2015. Wood, James B. 2007, Japanese Military Strategy in the Pacific War, Was Defeat Inevitable, Roman and Littlefield Publishers, 2007. Yen, Bill, 2014, The Imperial Japanese Army, The Invincible Years 1941-42, Bloomsbury Publishing, 2014. Primary Sources United States War Department. TM 30-480 Handbook on Japanese Military Forces, 1942-1942, online, 384 pp, highly detailed description of wartime IJA by U.S. Army Intelligence. External links Axis History Factbook, Imperial Japanese Army IJA, Overview of Imperial Japanese Army Weapons and Armaments in World War II Japanese War Posters The PBS Program Victory in the Pacific Imperial Japanese Army 3rd Platoon Reenactors Resource